Hey kids, it's the Brinola Show, where you'll see that your mom's a holy moly. You won't learn anything except moaning on your neighbor's ring. That's what you get when you listen to what the brick. You'll realize that we're all just pieces of shit. To blind with poopy rats on his ass, me why I'm so high. Drop the pants and show off your big giant ballroom. Use it the place where we can all play together forever and ever. Here is Brit sitting on the beat. Having a kid is like inserting a quarter in one of those machines that spits out a ball for a mystery prize. You can't guarantee what kind of kid you're going to have. If people could knowingly choose what type of kid they were going to have by their parenting style alone, I'm pretty sure a lot more people would be having children these days. That's probably going to be a possibility in the near future with all that AI shit that's going on. Choose your own kid. Think about it. If you could choose what kind of child you were going to have, you know, you would be like, oh, I want this slave child or the child that figures out how to reverse aging or the child that's like a touring musician that you can just be the roadie for. Well, that's currently not possible. I can tell you that I am one of three kids, and all of our personalities are drastically different. Despite being raised by the same assholes, I have an older brother who was this former heartthrob and also a huge bully, and now he's just like a sitcom dad, and he farts and just watches wrestling, and he wears a CPAP machine while he's sleeping. And then I've got a quiet brother. He keeps to himself most days. Sometimes he talks with his wife, but he's kind of a recluse. And then there's me, an overly sensitive but somehow outgoing lady who is battling a very pessimistic outlook on this world. I hear arguments a lot about whether having children or not is selfish. If you have children, you're subjecting them to this shit-stained world with a constant growing gap between the rich and the poor and whatever the hell climate changes. Weren't we supposed to be flooded already? Also, if you don't have children, you are selfish because you dedicate all of your time to yourself and maybe a little bit to that dog that doesn't challenge you on getting your next tattoo of Wednesday Adams downing a bottle of blue pills. The question of whether I'm selfish or not, you know, I didn't actually think about the reasons why I was going to, but I do have a kid. What's done is done. I didn't put too much thought into why do I want children because it was not really a question. I always knew I wanted to have a baby and it took me till I was 30 to finally make that happen. I figured that, hey, if my crazy bully of a brother could do it, I definitely could, and I kind of have the financial means. I'm not exactly in the poverty lines, but I'm, you know, I'm not rich either. I got pretty lucky with my firstborn. She's wittier than me, she's more clever, and she's got more common sense than my husband. So this led me to think, I might as well have another, and pray that they'll be best friends with my daughter. On a side note, you ever notice that the bigwigs who are so against climate change have kids? Bill Clinton, the dude who wrote The Inconvenient Truth, Al Gore, Bill Gates, freaking Mark Ruffalo. I'm sure all those people that were in charge of the Georgia Guidestones did. It's only the poor kids, aka the newly graduated college kids that have student loans, that really complain about not having kids for the sake of climate change. Now, nobody should be forced to have a baby, but it's pretty stupid to pretend that everyone has the same climate impact. I mean, yeah, we all have private jets taking single-person flights across the world. So this whole discussion about whether having kids or not is a good or a bad thing came to mind recently when I was visiting an all-in-one old people center. You know, hospice, rehab, retirement village, medical marijuana dispensary, 24-hour Hobby Lobby, and the place where they happen to be shooting the reboot for the Golden Girls. I was visiting a friend named Melba who was recovering after a neck surgery. She is one of the lucky ones who has friends and family actively visiting her. She isn't a really nice lady, but she is very interesting. She's almost 70 with a purple mohawk, clubbed feet, and has been wheelchair bound since birth. Even with those limitations, she had two kids, she's been to Woodstock, and she rarely spends a day at home. Unlike Melba, the other elderly people staying in the neighboring rooms are not in as good of spirits. When I visit Melba, there's Barbara, always coming out of her room to stop me right in my path. She starts babbling some stuff to try to trap me, but she's not in her right mind. I feel pretty bad for her. Barbara talks about needing to go upstairs for a checkup despite there being no upstairs in the building. She points at random people being wheeled around by the staff within the facility and she says, Oh, that's my brother or my sister. According to Melba, nobody is visiting Barbara. Does she not have any family any longer or is she just too much for them to put up with? In previous episodes, I disclosed that I have a fear of my own mental health decline and getting dementia before I die is what occupies my nightmares. Will my children please let me be a burden in their lives later, if needed? It's not the goal. 
when I had these kids to just expect them to take care of me. But it would be nice to not be like left in a facility where I'm kind of getting neglected. And how do people without children imagine their end of life being? It's still not exactly kosher to do some kind of assisted suicide, you know, where you just get like overdosed with cocaine when you know that your final days are coming. So at the facility, there's this other dude named Buddy. He's there until his blood pressure can be managed. But it doesn't seem so hopeful. It's been a few months, and still, whenever Buddy stands up, his blood pressure drops to like 70, which is practically dead. Buddy likes to go outside and smoke. (laughs) I mean, check the weather. Buddy refers to himself as a dink because he was previously married and he had dual income with his wife and no kids. Dink. I briefly talked about my birth plans with Melba and Buddy, and despite him being in his 70s, he started putting his fingers in his ears because this conversation was too disturbing and way too adult for him to acknowledge. Afterwards, he proceeded to say, have a gummy dummy, before popping an edible in his mouth, just to kind of relieve him of the stress of thinking about having children. These elderly people are seriously all knocked up on weed. It's not illegal in the state, and the staff doesn't really seem to mind as long as somebody else is bringing it in. Back to my original thought. Should you have kids? Should anyone have kids? The answer is pretty simple. Only if you want them. It'd be silly to say that they make life any easier. They 180 your life. And how could they not? You now have to be responsible for someone other than yourself. There's no guarantee that they're going to take care of you when you're older, that they'll make choices that you agree with, that they'll even outlive you. It's a luck of the draw. It's now much less taboo to not have kids than it was a few generations ago. And people are going to judge you either way. And if you have kids, you're probably going to hear everyone judge how you're parenting. I can't seem to escape a day without some kind of advice on like how I should be doing things differently. Sometimes the advice makes sense, but other advice it's like, okay, well have your own, damn it, or you already had your own, damn it. It's now much less taboo to not have kids than it was a few generations ago. People will judge you either way. I'm just hoping to get past these toddler years so I can go smoke a bowl with the people that are still hanging out in that facility. It's the month of St. Patrick's Day, and I've been going on nearly four years of being sober. So I'm gonna go drink a non-alcoholic beer and hope that I get that placebo effect. Cheers. Cheers.